Welcome to my second video about OSMend. I'll show you how to change your profiles, the map view of the profiles. I'll show you how to find uh, points of interest and how to show them on a map. And I'll show you how to import a custom map uh, render file. First of all, we're going to change the main menu into the dashboard menu. The tutorial uses this setting, so if you want to follow it, you can turn it on by following the screen. All right, let's go to the first things you see on your on your map view in the map view. This is the compass needle. If you press it, you change the map orientation. This is uh, compass like and this is with the north up and then I click it again and we get into a driving direction which is the most common in car navigation systems. Then we're gonna take a look at the scope. It will take you to where you are on the map. You, you center yourself on the map. So there I am, I'm the blue dot. I can zoom in and out and I keep centered on my position. Now we're going to go to the globe which is the the map view menu you can you can turn things on and off per profile and the app will remember your setting per profile so let's take a look at the uh, bicycle setting you can see uh, bicycle routes in purple that's in the routes menu I'll turn them off so here you see the standard layout for the bicycle and the blue lines represent uh, bicycle lanes but if you want to do long trips you might want to turn on the uh, bicycle routes so maybe for uh, walking or hiking you want the public transport so I'll go to walking and I've already turned them on so let's turn them off and turn them on again because you can choose what what kind of public transport you want to see there are also some uh, routes for, for hiking. So let's open the routes menu. And then you can see I've got Alpine hiking scale on and I've got coloring according to OSMC, which is off by default. You can see the red line, which is a long hiking route. And here you can see the flag uh, thingies you can see on the trail. And we can change the map style. So if you're hiking, you might want to use a topographic map style. In the details menu, you can show uh, road surfaces or quality or uh, different kind of things. And now we're gonna take a look at the points of interest. Here you can see the categories. And if I press the check mark thingy, I can check different categories but I can't search uh, the categories so I need to press the check mark again and there's the search thingy because if you're in a remote area you might want to uh, find water well there are different categories in the category water and I'll try a mineral spring then tap show on the map well there are no mineral springs in Friesland but I'll go back to the, uh, to the points of interest menu, the check mark thingy, and there it is, spring. Now I can select other kinds of uh, points of interest, like a gas station or whatever. It, it can take a while before the icons show up on your map, and this setting isn't really profile specific. And if you turn them off, it'll, it won't remember your choices from before. Uh, the icons are clickable and you can you can navigate to uh, to a point of interest now I'm going to uh, install a custom render file open feeds map it will show the the long distance cycling routes in Europe it's a XML file and you put it in the rendering folder of Osmond and there are two different places you can find that folder. One is in the root of your SD and then in the folder Osmond and the other one is in the Android data uh, net.osmond folder. Just copy the XML in the rendering folder 
and a little bit down you can see the tracks folder where you put your GPX files. You need to reboot OSMand and you can also hook your phone to the PC to do this. So if I go back to the cycling profile and then have a look at the map styles, I can choose the open feeds map render style. And you can see a different color coding and there are some numbers so you can follow one route. You can even download this map for uh, Basecamp or map source. Just Google it. So let's go to the main menu and have a look at the settings. In the general settings we can set up the default profile. So it'll, it'll boot up in, in that profile. I'll choose car because that's my main profile. Next, uh, the map orientation, direction of movement, which is my favorite, because it's the most easy way to follow a GPX file. And then the display orientation. I've got it set to landscape because of my, my screen, but on my motorcycle I've got it on portrait because I've got, I've got a wide view of the roads. And if you put it at, at same as device, the screen might flip from landscape to portrait and that's not what you want. You can change the names on the map in local names or English or another language. I prefer local names because you can, you can recognize names on, on signs and uh, things like that. You can change your voice guidance. And here's the data storage folder. It's where your maps will be downloaded and where you have to put uh, custom render files and stuff. Now we're going to take a look at the navigation settings. And these are profile specific. So every time you use a profile, it uses the settings you've set up over here. Uh, you can avoid roads. Uh, most of the settings are, are quite uh, self-explanatory, but the auto center map view might need some explanation. If you zoom out or scroll away from your route, uh, it, after a while the app will auto-center your position on the map. So if you're looking at the map and it jumps back to your position too soon, you might want to set this at a longer interval. At the top you can change to another profile and set it up as you like. The auto zoom setting might need some explanation. Uh, you can set it to no zoom, so it'll stay fixed in the zoom position you've chosen. But when you're driving a car, you might want your zoom uh, depending on your speed. So mid-range is my setting. It zooms a little bit out if I go fast and it zooms in when I go slow. So in a, in a village I can see junctions and outside the village I can see far ahead. Next up is plugins. If I open the dashboard I can tap show all and some plugins you have to pay for, some you have to uh, download and some you, you can just turn on and off. Like the OSMN development and uh, let's say trip recording. If you want to record your trip and export it as a GPX file, you can turn it on and you've got, you can record your trip. Now for the scary bit, the Osman development. Here I can turn on another profile. If I scroll down and choose application profiles, I can turn on the motorcycle. And I can use a specific profile for that because it's different from driving a car. Next is the download maps menu. Here you can see all downloads. You've seen it when you set up the, the app. When I go to local, I can see which maps I've downloaded. And when I go to updates, I can see which maps need updated. Well, there are, they're all up to date. Now I'm going to show you the difference uh, between road maps and standard maps. I'm going to deactivate the Netherlands so I only have the road map of Friesland. As you can see it's a bit, it's a bit more basic. I'll show you the differences side by side later on. Let's go to cycling. Well there are no cycling routes 
but there are some points of interest and the transport stops are also on there so it's a fully usable map if you want to turn the map back on again you have to scroll completely down and here are the differences side by side you can see the, you can see houses and roots and and green stuff so the standard map is a lot more clear usable if we go to the screen configuration you can set what you see the information you get per profile so i can turn on uh, speed limits for the car and turn them off for the bicycle so that's it uh, next up will be gpx files and creating your own route with waypoints within osmand until next time bye